Hi guys, welcome to Structure and Function. In this presentation, I'll be covering the absolute basics of hemopoiesis. So the learning objectives of this presentation are to know the different sites of hemopoiesis, to know the process of hemopoiesis, and to know the different cells produced during the process of hemopoiesis. So as the name suggests, hemopoiesis is the formation of blood cells. And here's just a few definitions just for you to get your head around. So a pluripotent stem cell, or a hemocytoblast, is an ancestral cell capable of self-renewal and differentiation. A progenitor cell is a direct lineage ancestor, so basically it's a colony forming unit, which is often abbreviated to CFU. A hemopoietic growth factor, these are glycoproteins which stimulate hemopoiesis. A receptor is a binding site of a specific molecule or a ligand on a cell. And finally a methanchyme, which is embryonic connective tissue mainly developed from the mesoderm. So, he, you might be come to a surprise that you start producing blood when you're a very, very young age. So when you're a 15 day old um, embryo, it's when you start actually producing blood. So at 15 days, you start producing blood in the yolk sac, the chorion, and the body, body stalk. Then after eight weeks, you've now got a liver. So at that point, that's the main site of hemopoiesis. Then between 12 and 16 weeks, you'll be producing it in the liver and occasionally, or sometimes, in the spleen. Then as soon as you hit 20 weeks, it's mainly in the bone marrow. But to be more particular, it's in red bone marrow. So red bone marrow fills the entire length of bones when you're when you're born. And as you obviously as you as you grow older, the amount increases. But the length that it takes up in your bone decreases as the bones enlarge. And just to give you a rough idea of how capable these the red bone marrow is, you can produce 100 billion red blood cells per hour when you're an adult and 400 million white blood cells per hour. That's a ridiculously high number. But obviously to do that you're going to need many nutrients and vitamins and one of the main ones you're going to need are B12. So hemopoiesis in adults. 95% or more occurs in the red bone marrow in your flat bones so such as your sternum, ribs, skull, pelvis and the ends of your long bones such as your thighs. And less than 5% only occurs in the spleen. And all of this is stimulated by hemopoietic growth factors. So this diagram I got, I got here from this link here. It's a really good article telling you about hemopoiesis and other stuff about the blood. So I highly recommend you check this out. So this diagram is showing you all the different ways that hemopoiesis can occur. So here we've got the pluripotent stem cell, which has been derived from the mesenchyme. So from here, it can differentiate to two points, to a lymphoid stem cell or a, or a colony forming unit, or the GEMM. Then from here, it can differentiate into all different sorts of cells and so on and so forth. So all these different cells can be derived from this ancestral cell, the pluripotent stem cell. Okay, so in the different stages of hemopoiesis, you get progenitor cells, and these are the colony forming units. So these are no longer capable of self-replenishing, so they are specialized and committed. So an example of this is CFUE, which stands for colony forming unit erythrocyte. So as we can see here on the previous slide, Here's your colony forming unit erythrocyte. And then another example could, is this CFU MEG, which is colony forming unit meg megakaryocyte progenitor. So, as we saw from that slide, they develop in several divisions to become mature cells. So, this is just a diagram I'm just showing you the difference between self renewal and differentiation. So, if we start off here in your stem cell pool, so imagine we've got here with all the pluripotent stem cells, these can then renew. So they can so, so they can reproduce, and then once you've got them, they can then differentiate. And notice, once they've hit this stage, they can no longer return. So once they're differentiated, they'll go through linear selection, maturation, then they'll perform their cell function and eventually cell death. And in order to kickstart all this off, you need hemopoietic growth factors. So four examples are erythropoietin. This is produced by the kidneys, and it increases your amount of red blood cell precursors. Thrombopoietin, this comes from the liver and it stimulates platelet formation. Then you get different cytokines, so you can get stem cell factors, you can get colony stimulating factors, and you, got, and you can also get interleukin, which, or a reactive IL, which increases your white blood cell production. But obviously, in terms of health, we can use growth factors to treat several different diseases. So people with a low blood cell count, for example, if we give them a load of erythropoietin, we can increase the amount of their red blood cells. Similarly, if you've got kidney disease, as we know, erythropoietin, if, if you've got um, malfunction in kidneys, you won't be able to stimulate as much red blood cells. 
So again, we can give erythropoietin to increase the amount of your red blood cells. Okay, so we've come to the tissue cell section. So it's been a short presentation, but it's only been covering the basics of hemopoiesis. So here I'm going to set you four questions, and I'm going to tell you how many marks they're worth. I'm not going to tell you how to get those marks. It's up to you to think how do you think that you get those marks. So for one mark, what is hemopoiesis? Then for ten marks, throughout the life of a human, the main sites of hemopoiesis differ. Describe where these changes in sites occur and state at what time frame these changes occur at. So that's worth 10 marks. Then for 6 marks, a young adult has developed kidney disease. Explain how the use of hemopoietic growth factors can prolong their life for 6 marks. Then for 10 marks, draw a diagram to represent the stages of hemopoiesis and include the names of the different types of cells produced. So again, I hope you enjoyed. It's been a short presentation, but as I said, it's only covering the basics of hemopoiesis. Good luck revising, and I hope you get the grades you want. Peace.